you have a site, doesn't have to be production, with Gutenberg on it right now, raise your hand. All right, keep your hands raised. Lower your hand if you do not like it. All right. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> some people like Gutenberg in here, that's a good thing. All right, so I'm gonna be talking about Gutenberg, I'm gonna be talking about the development aspect of it. Uh, if you are a user, if you are a blog writer, um, I love Gutenberg. I mean, uh, from a user experience on creating content, I think it's a big step forward for WordPress. I think it's gonna really revolutionize how we look at creating content. Um, I think we're in a box before, right? This text editor box, this all-encompassing monstrosity, this monolithic thing that you can throw short codes into and things like that. And I think Gutenberg is, is a good step for that. So my talk's on Gutenberg, but on the development side, talking about custom applications or custom development with it. I call it a tale of love, hate, betrayal, and a mighty comeback. And uh, also a case study. <laughs> um, I'm gonna start my talk by thanking you for being here. Um, if you follow me on Twitter earlier today, I kind of went on a little rant, uh, and I'm not happy with how a lot of people don't come for second day, so I'm really happy you guys are here, not just on the second day of our work camp, but on the very last talk of the day. Um, as a speaker, it's, I'm not gonna lie, when I see that I'm on the last spot, I'm like, ah, great, there's gonna be like five people in the audience because there's gonna be 10 people still left at work camp by the end of a Sunday. <laughs> I'm really happy you guys are here. Uh, so thank you for being now. You guys are all my friends. <laughs> uh, about me, my name is Roy Sivan. I'm a senior software engineer at the Walt Disney Company. I build websites for Disney. And as much as I sit at the Pantheon booth, and as much as I wear Pantheon clothes, and as much as I love Pantheon, I actually don't work at Pantheon. Um, and if you're a developer in the audience, there's two types of developers. Those who get the joke with my name and those who don't. And for those that don't, you're gonna learn about it real quickly. Um, a little bit more about me. My first install of WordPress was a beta version. Uh, I was learning how to develop websites and I learned about PHP include. I'm like, oh my God, this is gonna revolutionize everything. I can now have one header file. Someone needs to change a nav item, it's one file. That's amazing. And then my friend was like, you should check out this blog thing called WordPress, it looks pretty cool. And from then on I've been contributing, working on, and just using WordPress in all sorts of forms. Um, you can find me online pretty much anywhere, uh, RoyBoy789. All right, what am I talking about? Uh, WordPress, uh, if you're not here to talk about WordPress or listen about WordPress or you don't like WordPress, you're probably in the wrong place. place? Let me talk about WordPress. Uh, Gutenberg. Gutenberg is the new editor coming. I'm not going to go into too much detail about what Gutenberg is, but I'll be talking about it. I'll be talking about applications. So uh, while I'm, you might be working on sites for small businesses and you know brochureware websites, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit more about custom applications. So not necessarily apps for your phone, but not necessarily not apps for your phone. Um, more robust websites that require a little more functionality and maybe a little more advanced coding. And finally, Headless React. So I'll talk a little about what Headless is if you don't know. Um, but we're using React a lot nowadays. Gutenberg is React. So as we adopt more and more React, uh, it's just gonna be out there more. Um, I'm not typically a React developer. I am an Angular developer by, just because that's what I learned first. However, because of Gutenberg, I've really learned a lot more about React and how to use it, and I'm a fan now. Um, I still tend to use Angular just because I know it, it's easy to like get something running, but I tend to now use React more because it is now part of the WordPress ecosystem. Um, that's a developer thing, you know, uh, users don't really care that React's there or not, they didn't know what was there, it's just there for them, but as a developer that's a really big step. Another big step for WordPress as we kind of make our way to Gutenberg. So I'm actually going to step back in time for a second. Uh, the year is 2014. I was standing either in this room or that room talking about WordPress as an application framework. Um, I literally gave that talk here. And at the time, uh, WP API, or the WordPress REST API, was in its infancy. It just started to come in to 
plugin realm. I was playing around with uh, some <coughs> other options that were already out there, but I want to learn how to make JavaScript websites with Angular with WordPress powering them. Uh, fun fact, if you go to a WordCamp website and throw a different year in the URL, it still lives. So there's my talk from 2014, uh, WordPress as an application framework. This was on that line in my description using WordPress and WP API. Who remembers WP API and how we used to call it WP API? Yeah. Pepperidge Farm remembers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about today. Basically, I'm going to give you the same exact talk I gave four years ago because I don't know how to be creative. But instead of uh, WP API, I'm going to be talking about Gutenberg. It's pretty much the same exact talk, just with a copy replace or find and replace. Um, so yeah. Um, let's start at the beginning. Uh, there's some of you who didn't use, haven't used Gutenberg yet, right? Can you guys raise your hand? Who hasn't used Gutenberg yet? In development, in, in practice, whatever. So you've, you've seen it, you might have seen it on one of our presentations this weekend, but you don't actually have a site with it anywhere. So let me introduce you. It's Gutenberg. <laughs> uh, we have an affectionate name for Gutenberg. It's called Goots. Um, if you follow the Goots on Twitter, it's actually a good place to get up-to-date information as well as uh, satire remarks or sarcastic remarks about Gutenberg stuff. So while it, he's like the onion for Gutenberg, I would say. Um, not creating content, but just commenting hilariously about it. Uh, and I call it called the Goots because Gutenberg's really long. I can say it over and over again. It's really long. So Goots. Um, I know all of you are going to ask me, do I know when it's coming? And the answer is no, I don't know. But the good thing is, it's going to come when it's ready. So I can't give you a date, because I don't know a date. But I pretty much can guarantee that when it makes its way into core, and core comes out, whether it's 5.0 or whatever it might be, it's going to be ready for it. Well, WordPress will be ready for it. And I don't know if we'll be ready for it. But it'll be ready. Um, here's where my rant starts. <laughs> and this is where uh, my love and hate part kind of come into play. So I already told you why I love it. It does a lot of cool things. It's a really good editor for, for people who write content. But as a developer, here's where my hate really kind of comes into play. This is what well-structured JSON data looks like. It's an object. You see all the data. Keys are there. Their values are there. So when you're using the REST API, let me see another raise of hands. Who uses the REST API or knows about the REST API? You guys all come here on this side of the room? Like, yeah. Was, was that, was Wait, that I mean, planned? Uh, so this is a screenshot of the REST API. It's basically a, a way to get data from your WordPress site in JSON form, and you can use it pretty much anywhere. It, while WordPress democratizes uh, content, right, and the creation of content, uh, the REST API allows us to kind of democratize how we use the data. So if you have an application on your phone or somewhere else, and you want your blog data, your site data to be there, you use the API. Um, go back to 2014, I'll tell you all about it. Um, for every post via the REST API, you get a nice structure of data. You get an object for each post, and you get an array of those posts. So it's really well structured. You can easily iterate through all of your posts. You can tell it, hey, I only want posts from one category. Iterate through those. Um, and you can do a lot with that. It is structured. It's an array. It's easy to use. This is Gutenberg. I bet this data looks amazing <laughs> and super well structured. Right? No. Uh, how many of you know what an HTML comment is? Literally making a comment in HTML. Yeah. Then you know what Gutenberg data looks like, because that's all it is. Um, if you look at it, you'll see there's an HTML comment that says WP paragraph. That's literally just saying, hey, this is the start of a paragraph block. If you look at the next one, it's a cover image. There's some data there. And uh, another image. There's a cover image and an image. So, when I show this to, to people, and they don't know what the data looks like, and they're like, wow, I can't believe the data looks like that. 
What do I end up getting back from them? Thyroid. Uh, but what about the data via the REST API? It must be an array of data, right? There's blocks. The blocks are there. The blocks lend themselves to be an array of data. Nope. Not an array of data. Um, have you ever looked at the database of said Gutenberg data? It's not that pretty either. So, the screenshot up here, that's from SQL Pro. So if you don't use SQL Pro, it's a GUI for looking at my SQL, looking at your database. Uh, every time I see these things, I'm like, why? Why is it so painful? And, I, and I'll tell you why. It needs to be backwards compatible. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, backwards compatibility is as both the greatest thing about WordPress at times, but also the bane of my existence at times. Um, if you're running a WordPress site that's 3.9 or later, like newer, they say that your WordPress site should never break. And I'm not comfortable with that, but I also know WordPress runs 30% of the internet, so I also know that not having backwards compatibility is also not a good option. So here we have Gutenberg, here we have the data that we can do nothing with because it's useless. So thank you, my name is Rorsi Vaughn, any questions? <laughs> Um, I'm actually going to break right here. Are there any questions up to this point in the talk? I've shown you what Gutenberg looks like. I've shown you the data. Let's answer some questions. So right up here in the front. Yeah, so I understand that the data is stored in the way that it is for backwards compatibility, but why was there no forward compatibility also included in the initial design and development of Like why, and forward compatibility, as opposed to backwards compatibility, as in creating a method for structured data so you could access the rest of the app. That's an excellent question, just not for me. Uh, you, you um, just haven't heard anything about like I, I'm a kind of person that really wishes I had the time to contribute as much as other people contribute. I just don't have the time, um, and that's really unfortunate. Um, I wish that, yeah, someone in there was advocating for, hey, what's the future look like? What, is, uh, what does this look like 10 years down the line? And not just that, when the REST API came, it was a huge deal for developers. We were like, yes, a REST API, that's a good thing. We can build cool things with REST APIs. Gutenberg is built with the REST API. Couldn't be there if it wasn't for the REST API. But users don't care about the REST API. 30% uh, of the internet is running on WordPress, 29.9% doesn't care the REST API. <coughs> um, it's just there. And it's a great tool for us developers, it's not a great tool for users. Gutenberg, on the other hand, is a user tool. So users are, are said, you know, are put at the forefront. And, and, that's, and that's fine, because it is a user's tool. It is a conventional, new convention of how to create content. Why we haven't thought about, hey, how does this work with the REST API? How do we make this better? I, I don't know. Um, I'm sure there's GitHub issues for it. I'm sure this is a conversation that we've been having ever, ever since Gutenberg came out. Like, uh, I think uh, uh, maybe like San Diego, last San Diego, I know I talked to a lot of developers about it. Um, and it was just like, we all knew it was there. We kind of just let it go because we all have lives. We're all, we're all busy. We're all trying to make you know, mortgage payments, right? We can't always contribute as much as we want to, but we all know it's there. Um, but I will talk about how to get there uh, shortly. Any other questions up to, for up to this point? No? All right. Thank you for answering that question and asking that question because Gutenberg Object Plugin. Oh. <laughs> My shameless plugin. Um, so, what I did was after WordCamp San Diego, I was talking to, I think, Scott Bollinger, uh, I think John was there, and we just had a couple conversations, and I was like, you know what, this is BS. I, wanted, I, wanted, I want code and I want data. Um, I think it's fantastic what Gutenberg does for the users. I don't like what it does for me, because it does nothing. Um, so what I did was I hijacked the save command, and I said, when I save, when you save Gutenberg, I just want to gobble up that data. Um, I don't want to talk too much about the plugin, uh, if you want to talk to me about it afterwards, if you want to find me on Twitter, uh, I'm happy to talk about how it works. It's all open source, it's all on my GitHub. Um, if you find me on Twitter, I have links directly to it, so you can just link there. Um, but I, I was like, okay, this, this needs to happen. I need to be able to literally just iterate through blocks um, because it makes a lot more sense. Does anyone here use ACF Flex content or like those live, those layouts? 
So one of the greatest things about ACF Flex content was being able to go, hey, here's a new layout block with some data, and I'm gonna create a partial, a, a template partial for just that one layout. And I'm like, great, Gutenberg's gonna do exactly that except it's gonna be built, be built into four. <laughs> and then I saw this data. <laughs> and I'm like, so close, so close. Um, this is what the data looks like with my plugin installed. Um, you get a, on every single post return, you get editor blocks, there's an array, and each block is there with the attributes of the data for that block. Um, if you go to devgoots.url, it's also linked in my Twitter, uh, there's a live site running right now. Uh, if you go there to the URL, it'll take you to the welcome page, because I, I only have one page on the site, it's the welcome page, it's built in Gutenberg. Um, and I'll take you there, you'll see all the data, you'll see the editor blocks are there. Uh, not just that, I want you to try it out. So whether it's now or whether it's later, uh, go to that URL slash admin, which will take you to WP admin. Um, if you're a security nut and you hate when people share passwords, I would look away right now. <laughs> There's the username and password for the author account. Feel free to create your own content and see what happens when you go to the REST API endpoint. If you don't know how to get to the REST API endpoint, it's the same exact URL, slash wp-json, slash wp, slash v2, slash post, slash post ID. I'll leave that up, take pictures. Um, I didn't put the username and password on my Twitter, I feel like that might be a little bit much. <laughs> and if you're watching this on WordPress.tv, I don't know if it would work anymore. So that might go down. I don't think Pantown would be really happy with me for doing this. <laughs> Do I show you my t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so now that we have that data, how do you access it? Well, so there's two ways of, uh, via the REST API. One is I just inject it into the regular post object. So every time you look, you get your post now, there's, there's still going to be the content, it's still going to be backwards compatible because everyone needs to be backwards compatible. But there's also going to be that new uh, block. Where does it get saved? Um, when, during this whole process of thinking about things, I decided, well, what they should have done was what I just did, but create a new table in WP dash underscore post, so your, your normal post data. So next to post content, you had another column, which was just that data. Backwards compatible, forwards compatible, all in the same place. But they didn't do that. So I just created a new table. So you'll get a new table in your database called Goots Arrays, um, and that's where all the data for each post will be stored. It only works one way. You can only store data from Gutenberg. Uh, I had a long conversation with a guy named Kevin Hoffman, who's a smart developer, and we decided, well, I decided that saving data to, to the Gutenberg, uh, basically where Gutenberg stores its data, was bad if you're not using Gutenberg. Um, there's a whole bunch of other implications of that, you know, obviously you have to run through all the basic WordPress stuff every time you want to resave that data, so basically there's only one point of save and that's through Gutenberg. Makes it a lot easier that way. Um, but all the data is there. So again, it adds Gutenberg data, just as looks like this, to regular posts, as well as there's a new REST API endpoint I threw in just so I could look at something unique and isolate. But if you isolate, if you want to isolate just the Gutenberg data, you don't want the rest of your post content or you don't want the rest of your post data, you only want the Gutenberg data, you have a unique uh, endpoint just for that. Um, comes in handy when you are only needing the content. Um, similar to like if you guys are familiar with GraphQL and you only want the content, well, I have that REST API endpoint for that. Uh, for those of you who like ACF, I also threw in a PHP command, so it'll return an array of all of those blocks, which again, should have just been done out of the box, but it didn't. So just grabs the same data, returns an array, you for loop, while loop, whatever. You loop through that data, and you have all the data from every single block. I'm gonna break again. Do I have any questions up to this point? No? Good. So now that I've talked about why Gutenberg sucks and how I made a plugin to make it better, let's talk about a case study. Um, uh, is everyone familiar with the company Airstream? They make trailers. Campers, trailers, things like that. Yep. All right, cool. They have a cool little, like, their retro look company, stainless steel with rivets. I guarantee you've at least seen one of them. Uh, so they're actually building a new site, and Latlong is actually the digital agency that 
hired me to consult with them. Um, so yeah, this is the case study. Latlong basically reached out to me, uh, asked me if I knew anything about Gutenberg. And I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> then they asked me, hey, they told me their, their scenario. They wanted to build a headless React WooCommerce website. Um, let me let you sink that in a little bit. Headless React WooCommerce. And then throw Gutenberg on top. And I was like, you know what? I got just the thing for you and I just built it. It's called this object plugin. And they hired me on the spot. So what's the setup? Basically, we already talked about it. WordPress on the back end, WooCommerce on the back end, Gutenberg on the back end, a GraphQL layer, and then a headless React app. Um, it's not launched yet, so I can't really share too much code. I will share some screenshots, and I'll show you. I'll share more about like the kind of philosophical kind of look at how we took everything. But just keep in mind that the site was built for people who write content. Um, and that's why they want a Gutenberg. I recommend if you guys take clients, put Gutenberg on their sites. Don't show them the regular editor. Show them Gutenberg. Let them learn Gutenberg first. Um, so that's what we want to do with them. We knew that Gutenberg would be able, we would be able to leverage Gutenberg much more than the regular content editor, the classic editor as it is. Um, and so we were like, you know what, Gutenberg just makes more sense. So here's a cool screenshot. This is. Uh, Mm, this is WooCommerce. Ooh, that's WooCommerce. Uh, that's a headless WooCommerce app. Um, so that's what their dev site is right now. And so I'm just going to run through all the steps. So why WordPress? Um, I already talked about WordPress. You know, it was mainly for their content team. WordPress is a great CMS. Um, thanks to uh, Jeremy Fremont from uh, the last talks. Uh, great slide. I wish I had just copied it, but. Hey, that's cool. Um, WordPress is awesome. <coughs> I love WordPress. I've been using WordPress for a long time. You guys all love WordPress because you're here. So when someone says why WordPress, I, I don't even know how to answer that anymore. Why? <clears throat> why headless? Um, so performance, key factor there. When you have a headless app, you don't have to worry about the rest of WordPress. Uh, you don't have to load anything. You can do whatever you want with it. All you're doing is taking the data. Uh, ease of management. So when you have a site that's headless, you can really specify the people working on it to only be experts in whatever that's built in. Um, separate, separation of concerns. So if one team is actually writing in product data and blog posts and all that, you can have a separate team work independently on the front end. You'd even have developers working on the back end, so all they do is uh, the WordPress side, which is was my main role in this project. I was the WordPress guy. If they needed something on the front end, they came to me and said, hey, we're trying to you know, get data for products. I was like, hang on a second, pull, do a pull, you got the data now. Like I was the, the WordPress side of things. Um, you can separate the concerns there. And that allows really experts to kind of show what they're experts at. The guys that do, are doing the React side while I dabble in it, they're far beyond my level of React. And that's amazing. And that's awesome, but I would just slow them down if I was on the React side. However, they would slow me down if they were doing WordPress stuff. Because every time they do anything with WordPress, I'm like, all right, I'll just clean up your code now. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's never fun. But I was the WordPress guy, and it made things easy. And then finally, connectivity. Uh, if you know about APIs, you know they're now kind of everywhere. And when you have a headless app, it allows you to actually connect to multiple APIs. So I'm saying WordPress, WooCommerce, and all that. But let's say you have another API that does like analytics tracking. Or you have another API that maybe pulls in data from somewhere else. Maybe you have a mix of products of WooCommerce and Amazon, right? With a headless app, you can actually grab all that data, put it together, and again, you're on that separate server for multiple, multiple reasons. It's just better. Um, not for everybody, not for every blog site, so don't get any crazy ideas that your blog about cats should be headless. It shouldn't be, I guarantee you. Um, but it does come in handy. All right, working with Gutenberg. Um, let me tell you, working with Gutenberg is so much fun because it is the best moving target. Uh, I love working on something and then having it break two weeks later because they pushed an update. It's just fantastic. Um, I will give you a hint though. Um, this is something I learned 
uh, pretty early on during the development of this project, and that is if you're going to be doing what I'm doing, first don't, <laughs> stupid. But if you're going to anyway, uh, what I did was actually turned off all the core blocks. And I said, I don't want any of your blocks, I'm gonna create my own custom blocks. And that's what we did. We created custom blocks, and I think the only block we have that's core is paragraph, because we couldn't figure out how to get some of the keyboard shortcuts they like hijack into the, that block. Because that's like the main block that like when you load up a post, there's already a core block ready to go for you to type into. A lot of that like trickiness, we couldn't figure out how to like mimic that into other blocks. So we just love the core paragraph block on. But every other block that's on there is a custom block. And it made my life so much better. Because as soon as we made that decision, I didn't I cared about Gutenberg updates, but I didn't care about the blocks themselves because the blocks themselves were basically just extra fluff that we weren't even using. Um, Gutenberg and WooCommerce. Uh, who here just absolutely loves working on templating WooCommerce sites? Yeah, so I thought no one, because no one does. Um, I will say that Gutenberg and WooCommerce Fortunately, don't play at all well together. There, it's, it's amazing how much this product, these two products, don't work together. Um, but that makes it more fun. So it, they do work together. I can't be too. It's kind of unfair. Um, they do play together, uh, like Tom and Jerry. There's a good example. They play together like Tom and Jerry because sometimes it'll work and they're friends, and then not most of the time they're not. Um, the, the, my, my favorite thing about the headless part, though, is there's no WooCommerce templates. Everything we did, including the cart, including the checkout, is all headless, it's all React. So all they're doing is we're using WooCommerce on the back end for products, orders, payments, but pretty much everything else is its own React thing. Um, another cool thing that happened while I was working on WooCommerce in Gutenberg, this came out, and that's a change log from WooCommerce. Yeah, that was a fun update. We were like, wait, what just happened to Gutenberg on all our products? And then I had to dig through the changelog files and I found this. Disable Gutenberg editor on products. <laughs> it's a tweak, yeah. That's what it is, a tweak. Um, didn't see that one coming, no one told me it was coming. And you know what they did? They created a filter really far deep into the code with no documentation that allows you to turn it back on. So there was a fix. Took me a while to find it, um, but it does work. If you need my code for that, let me know. I can share it with you. Um, you'll find it. There's people talking about it at this point. But yeah, finding that saved us a lot. Um, so if you want to do Gutenberg and WooCommerce, you can just use that. Hmm. All right, let's talk about React a little bit. Have anyone, has anyone here worked with React already? Cool. handful of you. Um, I will say that uh, there was a, a thread on Twitter talking about some tips and tricks for Gutenberg development. And one of the biggest things I took away from all of this experience was I kind of learned React separately before Gutenberg, right? And Gutenberg has, uh, well, they introduced a library that sits on top of React. So when you do something like, I think it's wp.element, that literally just creates a React component. So what I did was I just took the wp.element out of the equation and I just did React work so I could learn Gutenberg. I didn't want to learn Gutenberg's like arbitrary library just so I can learn how it works. And then I added in the library afterwards. Um, made my life a lot easier. So if you're a fan of React and you already use React, try doing it that way. Um, one of the coolest features that we put together for this project was React components are agnostic to where they live. So a React component can live anywhere you want it to. A single React component can both live on your front end and be user facing, as well as live inside of Gutenberg. So you can have the same exact code base, both power your front end, your headless front end or whatever, as well as power Gutenberg. That's one code base. Um, this is not a front end and a front end front end editor. That was hard to say. It's not a front end editor, but it's not too far off. So like, you see the similarities between these two uh, components, right? They're three images, they all link to products. Um, they're identical, that's because they have the same data. Whether you're viewing the site on the front end or you're viewing it via the Gutenberg editor, 
same data is going to the same code, so why can't it look identical? Um, I'm not saying that, it, again, there's going to be a front end editor soon, but you can kind of foreshadow what's going to happen maybe Gutenberg v3 when you have that kind of power. Um, so I'll just, I think there's actually already front end editors that people have put together, like mashed up together for Gutenberg. I've seen a couple of examples, but um, I think this is where it's going to go, and that's going to be pretty cool. Um, I know there's a lot of page builders that already do front end editing, but this is, again, this is one code base. There's no extra code. We literally have a component library that sits outside of both WordPress and the headless. Uh, we, we made an NPM package, and then every time we update a component, both sites just get an NPM update, and they have the latest code. Um, one of them takes Gutenberg settings, one of them reads Gutenberg data from the API. Um, that was my case study, and I want you to try it for yourself. So I already gave you the author for my dev account, but I want you to actually have your own version of it. So what I did was, I went to Pantheon, and I created a custom upstream. Um, and I'm not gonna walk you through how to do this. Um, feel free to find me, because I have business cards from someone who might be able to help you. Um, but what you can do is you can go to Pantheon, create a free dev account, 100% free, uh, create an organization, and then you can basically just say, hey, I have a custom upstream, here's the URL to it. And when you tell it, hey, I need to install a new site, it'll ask you which site do you want to install? Do you want to install a WordPress site? Do you want to install a Drupal site? And you'd be like, no, I want to install Goots and Goots Object. That's my custom upstream. So that's going to give you everything you need to get up and running with uh, everything I just built for Airstream, more or less. Um, it's my plugin, it's Gutenberg, it's WordPress. Um, has anyone created content yet on that site? Has anyone actually managed to get on there? You did, awesome. Uh, but I can see you and I just get JSON. Content. This is what you would see uh, on the front end if you're viewing the site. And this is what Gutenberg saves. This is Gutenberg at its finest, right there. Um, luckily, we have my plugin installed. And then I can see, hey, there's some editor blocks. And I see that the first block is a core paragraph block. Um, this is really important because we want to know not just the name of the block that we're working on, but the core allows you to know, hey, this is a core block. It's a namespace for that block. So if I wanted to create a partial or a template part just for that one block, I now can. Um, so Gutenberg is changing every day. That's also awesome, terrifying, just like a tsunami. Yes, it is. Um, question is, will the rest of servers will we get wiped out? But as you can see, all the data is there, right? So someone created, created a list. There's all the list values. We know that if it's a list, there should be a UL. But here, there are all the LIs. And this is what Gutenberg saves. Like, I'm not modifying anything. This is just what it saves. And instead of saving it like this, I'm like, hey, it should, it should be array. And then there's a core embed with a YouTube video, which is awesome. <coughs> I'm pretty excited about this kind of stuff. Uh, that's it. Are there any other questions? Yeah. I have a question about caching. So most WordPress and WooCommerce sites, people put in all sorts of caching plugins to create 
if you will, a, a lightweight decoupled architecture, of, uh, sort of a headless, if you will, with like page caching, kind of buffering, you know, the PHP workers and database queries. Um, what you're presenting here is a real decoupled application. You have a React front end, WordPress root back end database. Um, so I presume your, your front end had to be really fast, really, uh, you know, uh, handle traffic spikes well, and you had use cases for that. So um, what sort of caching did you have, or, or how did you do caching? Did you still do like object caching in the, the back end system, WordPress Woo? Is there special caching on this React app, or how do you, how do you get that done? So uh, since the project's still in flight, we haven't analyzed all the caching, right? But I will say that there probably is going to be caching on the back end just to cache the database. But what I didn't show you was the GraphQL layer. So the GraphQL layer also does, has a caching to it. So when you ping the GraphQL layer, it's going to return uh, the last, uh, the last, uh, last version of the data. Um, it does that through hash. Basically, it creates a hash mark and then sees if the, the database has changed at all, um, or it'll periodically update itself without you forcing it to. Um, and then the front end will just be completely cached. Obviously, at, at the front end, because it's headless, there is no PHP, right? So it's all HTML, JavaScript, CSS. That's all it's running. You can run that on C, and you can CDM the crap out of those kind of files, right? So um, I'm not too worried about the performance because it's headless. Um, there are issues, obviously, with uh, um, issues when it comes to on-the-fly kind of data, right? Like, so we're now working on the checkout aspect. There is no WooCommerce checkout. It is a React part of the React app. So they're going to ping me, you know, uh, on my on the API side. I'm going to create a token. I'm going to send it back, and we're going to go through the transaction. And I'm still going to have to use WooCommerce for all that, but just via the API only. So I'm going to create an order. Um, and I think that's it. I don't think there's going to be that much more caching to it. I don't think we'll actually need it. Um, once we hand it over to Airstream, they also have a tech side that's going to probably look and, and make that any better than the thing, too. Question in the back. When you create your custom blocks, are you using, like, are you using, like, create a preferred block that, that you can't plug in that, that's not, I'm sorry, I'm going to push it. But, uh, I think that's a minute or something. Is that what you're using to create custom blocks? So the question was if I used uh, anything like out of the box to create my blocks. Um, no, uh, I have seen uh, his his uh, code base. Um, I looked at it to help myself learn a little bit about Gutenberg. Um, if you want to do, if you want to learn more about it, I highly recommend looking at Zach Gordon. He has some really good stuff out there for tutorials on how to get up and running with creating blocks, but. Um, once I looked at both of theirs, uh, plus Josh Pollock has a few really good examples, um, I just kind of took all the best of it and I put it together with some of just the you know, core documentation that they've released and created our own blocks that way. I didn't really, I kind of like a mishmash of everything, I guess. Yeah? Is there a merge proposal for your No, but if you want to create one, I'd be happy for you to create one on my behalf. <laughs> Yeah. Does um, your plugin work for the um, core blocks? Or? Yeah. So let me let me run through that really quick. Um, so out of the box, you get um, you get all core endpoints, basically uh, core blocks supported. Um, up to the last time I looked at Gutenberg and looked at what core blocks are. Right. If they add a new block, I'm probably not have, uh, already have uh, support for it. Uh, what I did do was, uh, there's two main things you might want to look at. Uh, first is look at this thing. This is actually adding custom post type support. Out of the box, you only get post support for my plugin. Um, we had an issue with uh, Airstream where they have other post types like products and uh, they have their own custom post type for the stories of blog posts. Uh, so I had to create that. I used a, a global uh, define for that, just so it can be across all site. That's kind of just how we did it. I might change that up later, but for right now, that's what it is. Um, there are a lot of helper functions out uh, There's one for getting the array of data. Um, but the main part that I liked, that I added in, was this hook in JavaScript. So if you create a custom walk, and you're like, hey, uh, it doesn't come out right in your editor, like in the API, uh, it's basically WP hook add filter. Uh, you, it's clean data, and then the name of the block, so core paragraph. 
and then you just pass it back to callback, and that'll pass in the attribute data, and then you can do whatever you want with that data and then send it back, and that's what'll sort of the database. So what I did was I went through um, here are all the blocks that I have currently supported. Um, basically all it is is block name. Every single one just is a pretty simple file. It's just which block am I supporting with this um, and what, what data it needs to go back. Um, you can just send back the same exact data if you want and that's what it does by default. But for this one I needed to render, you know, something to string at to render. I think because with the uh, what is this? This is a uh, core button. I think there was other like React components built into the text. So rendering to string makes it a string, which I store in the database. So by default, you get basically just a return of the attributes. But then you can hook in, create a filter, and then you can run any um, any block. So what I did was WDS re uh, released that they were going to create. They have a plugin out with their own blocks. I said, hey, WDS, that's cool of you to create a plugin with extra blocks. So because they open source their project, I was like, I'll add in that support into my plugin. So if you use WDS blocks, uh, I support that. But it's pretty easy to add new block support um, and save the data or manipulate the data any way you want before it gets stored in the database. If you are going to use my plugin, Please create issues on GitHub. You just go here, you go issues, and then you create one. Um, I had someone tell me uh, a couple days ago that the core heading stopped working, and that's because Gutenberg is a moving target. So to create an issue, I looked at it, I realized what I needed to change, I changed it, I created a pull request for myself, and then I merged it, and it fixed everything for that block. So if you find problems with it, obviously create issues. I'm happy to work with anyone that needs to use this for anything. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah? So if you're using your plugin and there is a new block or a change in a block uh, on the Gutenberg side, what would happen on, with your plugin? Do we get an error message or do we have So by default, what it'll do is it'll try to save it anyway. Okay. And it'll run through all of the save functions. You might see an error in your console because it'll error out somewhere okay. um, before it actually saves the database. So it actually won't save any new data to the database if there's an error. But if it's more or less easy data, like strings, uh, maybe like integers, things like that, then it'll just save normal. Like a lot, of, a lot of the blocks I was looking at didn't really need much alteration because they're just like a string. So as you, like my core filter just returns back whatever it sent, gets sent. And the only issue comes in play when it's like, okay, there's more data to this, right? So um, I had a problem with the core paragraph where drop cap is just a boolean. You want to drop cap on this paragraph. That's easy, I can just return that back and it'll save no problem. But the content itself has all these like sub-react components for like when you bold something or when you have an underline. So I have to turn that into a string first and then save it. But if you do have a block and it's a core block, uh, create an issue and I'll, and I'll get on it. Question? Uh, just, just for my knowledge, um, you're calling it a web application, but is this just a website that's more interact that it's cheap? What, what do you mean by web application? It could be anything. So anytime you have, um, I mean I say web applications in terms of like, yes, high UI or high functionality needs that are beyond a brochure or a website, or beyond a, hey, here's what we do, here's what, you know, about us, here's my contact page, right? That's, that's your basic WordPress website. Um, get beyond that into realms of, hey, I need something really custom, that's when you start talking application realm, right? But it can be a phone application. I, I love AppPressor for what it is. It is a headless app that runs on people's phones. This can help you run your AppPressor better. If you wanted AppPressor supported, Gutenberg supported into your AppPressor, you do something like this, and now you have Gutenberg data in AppPressor on any phone app. So it's really, anytime you're consuming data from WordPress, not within WordPress, or I mean, even within WordPress, but that's headless. That's what I'm going after. Yeah. So a weird question. I found out today that Gutenberg is being ported to Drupal. Yeah. Um, does your plugin work on how your CMS is or plugin now? Yeah, no. It's definitely a WordPress <laughs> plugin. Um, but in theory, I mean, if, if you were to change where it hooks into, um, it could work. I mean, you'd have to just change what initiates the save. 
Um, so my initiation is save block. Yeah, WP data subscribe. That's what initiates it. As soon as that triggers, everything else gets triggered. So find a way to replace that line with Drupal data subscribe, and you'll be golden. I, I mean, the, the, the database part would also not work. So you'd have to create the database part. <laughs> 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 is Drupal going to have messed up data? No, no, no. no. So, <laughs> so, wow, I, hate, yeah. I don't want to say I hate to say this, but Drupal figured out the data problem a long time ago. Um, and now that they have Gutenberg, uh, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with um, when it comes to that kind of stuff because they've already figured out the data problem. Yeah. Can you expand on that just a little bit, please? The data that I want, Drupal already had. Like, when I show this to the Drupal dev, they're like, that's nice. We had that, like, whatever, five years ago. It was like eight. Yeah. Like Drupal 4. But yeah, the data the data has always been more well structured on the Drupal side. Um, the CMS part of Drupal has always lagged for me. Uh, Gutenberg now with Drupal, mm, I might have to look into that. Any other questions? Is anyone going to install my plugin? How many installs do you have? It's it's open source. There's no, it's not part of the org, so I can't really count it. Um. You know, you know what really matters to me? Airstream. They're, they're using my plugin. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I can't tell you because I I know a couple have thrown in issues, so they're probably using it on, on somewhere. Um, but I don't, yeah, I don't have a count on active installs. Have you been sharing this in Europe? Any word camps in Europe? I think they'd be really interesting. No. Okay. If you're on WordPress talk TV in Europe, Plug in, check it out. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty new project. I mean, I, I, I created it right after WordCamp San Diego um, when I was really annoyed about the whole thing, and then I've just been updating it. You know, So I guess the initial commit right here is five months ago. That's when I first created it, and then been kind of working on it ever since. Yeah. Do you think uh, this plugin could get merged before in a structural way? Like, do you think that's a realistic probability? I haven't talked to anyone on the core side about this, um, so I don't know. Uh, maybe not in the way I do it, because I'm kind of a coder that's like, I just need this done, and I'm gonna do it as elegantly as I can within just getting it done. Like, there's certain parameters there, right? Like, eventually I'm gonna get to a point where my code's not the best code, but it works. Um, so I don't know, they might have a better way of, of doing this, but I think, I'd love to see conceptually something like this getting merged before. Um, I'd love to see, uh, as she said, forward compatibility as opposed to just backwards. But if anyone is watching this core, I'm happy to you know work on this and get it mergeable. Any other question? Yeah. What else would you like to do with this? <laughs> Take over the world. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I. I've always been a headless fan. Um, I love building stuff, uh, you know, outside of the realm of a theme or a plugin. Um, so I'm curious to see what Gutenberg does, and I just want to make sure that this is going to keep up with Gutenberg. Um, in the future, I don't know. Maybe it'll power more things. Uh, if as Gutenberg kind of itself grows into whatever final form it's going to take, uh, I hope that this thing kind of just tags along and is able to continuously be thinking about the future as opposed to always thinking back. I love that, future compatibility. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that from now on. Yeah. Just calling out Morton that WordCamp US uh, mentioned how Gutenberg and VR will be together closer and sooner than we think. Yeah, um, I don't know what I'm gonna plan on doing this further, but for right now, as long as it supports the current iteration of Gutenberg, then I'm all happy with that. Yeah. Can you talk about the decision of using GraphQL in projects? Uh, the, the main purpose of using GraphQL um, is when you're querying data. Like I told you, like I have one REST API endpoint that just adds the Gutenberg data to your post, um, to your regular post content, and then I have another API if you just want the Gutenberg data. So GraphQL allows you to say, hey, I want the latest post from this category, but within that post, all I need is the title and the content, or I need the title and the link. And then all you get back is just that data, so it's a little bit more, it's a little bit faster if it's cached properly. 
as well as the fact that you don't have to worry about it not being there because GraphQL takes care of that concern. You're saying, hey, I need this, and in some form or another, you're going to get it back. So you're not saying, hey, I need a hyperlink or I need a permalink. Uh, first, let me check if it's there. You can kind of assume it's going to be there. And so that's why we kind of went in that direction. Um, on Saturday morning, Alex Vasquez challenged me to learn Gatsby. So I don't know if anyone's heard about Gatsby yet. Um, I spent the day trying to learn it. It failed miserably. I couldn't get there. But my next iteration, I guess, would be learn Gatsby, get Gutenberg connected to Gatsby, and figure out how, what that looks like. Um, that would be sort of like GraphQL, uh, I think it's a performant front end, and then a headless back end. Are there any other questions? Cool. I'll let you guys go a little bit early because we're all exhausted. <laughs> um, you can find me pretty much anywhere online, <laughs> Airboy789. Um, and if you haven't used Gutenberg yet, please go test. Test your site on something. If you don't know how to test a site, if you don't have a place to test your site, um, go to Pantheon, set up a free account. Uh, they'll help you migrate. Well, they won't help you. They'll tell you to install a plugin which will help you migrate your site to your dev site. And then you can just install Gutenberg. And then you'll see what happens to your site. I mean, in a lot of cases, it'll, nothing will happen. But in some cases, it'll all break. Um, figure out which one you're, what side of the equation you're on, and you know, go from there. Uh, but test. Anytime anyone has a, quite, has a concern about Gutenberg with me, I just say, hey, I know how to fix your problem. Test it. And that's really always the answer. Cool. Thank you.